Hey everyone, it is Sequoia with the Chase Street Renaissance. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. If you are not, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm gonna be showing you how to make concrete jars with cement all. Um, I'm gonna be using molds from Shape Makery. This is the three inch mold from Shape Makery. Um, I'll leave the link down in the description box. So I'm gonna give you the basic setup first and then we're gonna cue my beautiful intro because I just have to get that out of the way because I'm just so proud. But um, we are gonna be working with measurements today. I'm gonna give you um, the exact measurements that you need for this specific mold. Um, I know that Modern Craft Lab has a mold that I believe is about this size also. So it's a good starting point. Also, if you have the three inch mold from Modern Craft Labs, which I'll also link in the description box if you're interested. I personally do not have that mold. Um, I, add, I do have the larger mold coming in the mail today, so I'll do a review on that once I get it. But for now, um, we're going to be using this mold from Shape Makery. So let's cue that intro and we'll get right into it. So basic setup for when you're working with these molds or when you're mixing any type of concrete, um, you're going to want to put down some type of protective barrier on your surface if you care to keep it, um, you know, nice um, because it will harden on your surface and it, it'll make it a little bit difficult to clean up. Obviously, you don't want to scratch your surfaces, so I recommend some type of sheet, paper, silicone, something like that where you don't mind getting it dirty and you can just rip it up and replace it. Um, we're gonna be working with Cement All. I'll link that in the description box below. Also, you can pick it up at Lowe's, Home Depot, any of your hardware stores like that. Um, you're going to need, obviously, your mold. I recommend a silicone bowl for mixing um, because at the end of it, you can just let the uh, cement dry and just crack out the majority of it. It's not gonna be perfect. You are gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup, but I recommend um, a silicone bowl I can also link this in the, in the description box. Um, you're gonna need some sort of scoop, a cup or something like that. I like to use things that are reusable. Um, so just a measuring cup. Um, silicone spatula to mix. Again, it makes it really easy for cleanup because you can crack it right off. Some sort of scale. My area is really dirty because obviously I've been working with this stuff. So like I said, if you, you want to work in an area where you don't mind getting it a little dusty. Um, so you're going to need a scale where you can measure in grams because we are going to be using grams today. Um, and I think that's it. That's our basic setup. Uh, distilled water you want to use because if you live in an area like mine where your water is a little on the harder side, I find that um, you, you're you probably going to get some streaks on your finished product. So I recommend some distilled water. So we're only going to be doing one mold today. If you have multiple of these molds, then obviously you just double the measurements. So I'm going to walk, <laughs> kind of walk and talk here, right? So I'm going to give you the measurements and then explain why I like it that way. So we're gonna use 300 grams of cement all, and then we're gonna do 60 grams of water. Now, when I mix that together, you're gonna to find that my mixture is gonna be a little on the thinner side. It's not gonna be that pancake batter consistency that people speak of. I actually don't even know what that means because everybody likes their pancakes different. So I'm not really sure what pancake consistency means, but I don't like living by that rule of thumb or working by that rule of thumb. So we're going to do 60 grams of distilled water. I like to put my water in first because when you put your cement in first, generally the water just kind of, I mean, it. I just don't like how hard it is to mix it. So that's about 60, that's 64 grams. And if you're a little over, that's fine. It's not a huge deal. That's 61 grams right there. And then we're gonna take our cement 
tear our scale again. And we're gonna do 300 gram. This is a one cup scoop. I know I showed you that smaller scoop there, but that's just for, that was just for demonstration purposes. Um, this is one that I keep in my container where I keep my cement. So that's about 312 grams, 307, 303. And like I said, it's not a huge deal if you're a little bit over. And then we're just gonna mix. Now, I find that a lot of people say that their mixture, when it's thicker, they get a lot of bubbles. I know mixing it also causes some bubbles, but I like a thinner consistency like this because it really allows me to not have to deal with the bubbles. So I don't know if you can really see, I mean, if that's how you like your pancakes and so be it, then that's pancake consistency for you, but it's not for me. So you wanna mix that up real good. And then you'll notice how it gets poured in. That is actually, it just runs right along down the sides. I don't have to stop and tap. So once it gets there, I give it a little bit of a tap because I want to see where I am. Scrape your sides just to be able to top it off. And that's pretty much it. So like I said, I like a thinner consistency because it allows me to pour it in the mold a little bit easier. Um, and I do not get those bubbles that are caused when my mixture is thicker. I know a lot of people have asked me, does it uh, compromise the integrity of the jar? Is the jar any, um, is it weak at all? Does it crack when I test it, when I make candles? And my answer is no, I have not had any instances where um, I've tested it with cotton wicks or wooden wicks and my jar is cracked. Um, any jar will crack or break if it is over wicked, but I have not experienced that yet. So this is one that I poured yesterday. I actually tried to record this video yesterday and the angle of the video was just absolutely terrible. So you couldn't really see anything. So I'm gonna unmold this to give you an idea of what it will look like once that one hardens. Now I didn't use any color. I used the same measurements and this is the same mold. So there you have it. This will look like this once I unmold it. And you can see there's no large bubbles or anything like that. There's some really super, super tiny ones, but that's to be expected. But there's none of those really big bubbles that you get um, if your mixture is a little thicker. So I really hope that, I know that video was short and sweet, but I really hope that helped someone um, realize that it's okay to make a thinner mixture for your cement jars. I did the same thing for these here. These are all sealed and ready to go and be made into candles. Um, the reason why I didn't pour the lids is because I haven't gotten down my measurements 100% to be able to put you know, the 300 grams for the mold, the 60 grams for the water, and then another, you know, X amount of grams in water for the lid. So I haven't gotten that far yet, but as far as the mold, like I said, I'll leave the link to everything down in the description box for the silicone mixing bowl, spatula, and these molds that I got off of Etsy. Um, and I really hope that that helps someone. In my next video, I'm gonna be showing you how to add color 
to your jars. Um, if you've been looking at Quickcrete, I'm gonna explain to you why this stuff is a little difficult to work with. Um, and I also have a ton of colors from Direct Colors that I've been using. And I believe this color gave me this color jar. And this blue here that I have, super, super vibrant, gave me this. So if you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comment box. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Share this video with a friend or in a Facebook group that is looking for a little bit of help. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.